You are now watching Believe. Do you believe? We're back here on Serralo Sports Talk, and joining the show up next, he's a former NFL tight end, but if you don't know him from his NFL playing days, you do know him because he starred on season 14 of The Bachelorette and season six of Bachelor in Paradise. Clay Harbor. Clay, thanks so much for joining the show. I uh, appreciate you having me on. You know, I love talking football and I love talking Bachelor, two of my favorite things. <laughs> well, look, we're going to do it all in the next 12 or 13 minutes or so. So I can't wait to dive into it with you. But, you know, something's happening this Sunday that happens once every four years. And it's the two teams that you had the most notable years of your NFL career with, the Philadelphia Eagles and the Jacksonville Jaguars facing off. Both of these teams have exceeded expectations more than maybe any other teams in the NFL so far in the young season. What are you most excited for about this matchup? I'm just excited. These teams are both good. And, and a lot of the times that doesn't happen. They're both in first place. They're both good teams. They both have good young quarterbacks. They both have solid receivers and good defenses. It's, it's going to be a great matchup. Not only is it my two teams, but these teams are playing for something they're playing to make the playoffs or playing for a deep playoff run and then you got the Doug Peterson uh coming back to Philadelphia story so this is going to be a really fun game and I'm going back to Philly to watch this one live in person oh that's got to be exciting as hell man I bet you can't wait for that so you know while we're talking about these teams and the success they're having I, I want to know you know obviously you might have a little bias in you but as objectively as you can answer this how legitimate of an AFC South contender are the Jaguars I think they're I think they're my favorite they're uh the Colts came on strong last week and obviously had a big win against the Bills you got Tennessee who's always a threat Houston doesn't seem to be a factor after a, a loss to the Bears and I mean I'm a Bears fan but I mean you lose the Bears you got problems so I think the Jags are my favorite with the way Trevor Lawrence is playing he's getting the ball out quick he's accurate he's got weapons James Robinson had 42 yards after contact last week. This guy's running hard. With a run game and a pass game like that, it's hard to go against the Jags. You know, you brought up James Robinson, and I absolutely love him. He was the last pick of mine his rookie year in both of my fantasy football leagues, and he just made me his biggest fan in the world that season. He's an FCS guy. You're an FCS guy. Can you explain to people that, that haven't maybe seen a lot of James Robinson because the Jaguars aren't on primetime a lot? Can you explain just how good this guy is? Oh, he's incredible. The guy is just a tough runner. Like I said, he had 42 yards after contact last, <laughs> last week. And a lot of guys don't have that in the entire game. So this guy will run through the first tackle. He's a hard runner. He's a strong runner. He's quick and he's fast, but he's powerful. He's small, compact guy, and he's powerful. And he compares uh, – he, he goes well with, tra with Travis Etienne because Etienne is so fast, so shifty, so quick. You got the Thunder and James Robinson. You got the Lightning and Etienne. They're a great duo. I, I love it, man. I, I grew up rooting for those Giants teams with Brandon Jacobs and Ahmad Bradshaw. So, you know, anytime you get that Thunder and Lightning, that smash and dash back there in the backfield, it, it's, a, it's a great combo. Flip into the Eagles. What do you see in Jalen Hurts? I mean, this guy's game over the past three years has grown so much. To you, what's the biggest improvement that you've seen? Man, even going back to tra training camp when I was there hanging out and, and watching the Eagles, it, it was clear to me that this guy was getting the ball out quickly. He's not holding on to the ball like he was last year. I got to go back and check the next-gen stats, but he is getting rid of the ball fast. He is anticipating much better than he had in the past. He's no, He knows when his receiver is going to be coming in and out of the breaks, and he's not waiting. It's something you see a guy like Justin Fields doing. He's waiting to see the ball waiting to see the receiver come open besides throwing it and knowing and trusting that he will come open. you got to have anticipation if you're a quarterback. And that's the number one thing that I've seen from Jalen Hurts is his anticipation. Absolutely. I mean, he's having a phenomenal year. You know, you mentioned Fields. You mentioned the Bears a couple minutes ago. Let, let's talk about your Bears because Justin Fields, and I, I'm going to stand by what I said a couple of years ago, going into that draft, I said, if I had the first pick, I would want Justin Fields as my quarterback. I know it was a hot take. But I loved everything I saw out of him in college. Hasn't worked out in the NFL so far. So how much of that, in your opinion, is on fields? And how much of that is on the Bears organization and the situation he was drafted into? I'm going to say 60% is on fields because, I mean, he's the team isn't great around him. But, I mean, he's not really showing much this season. Last season, you saw some, some good things. But you think about it. People, oh, it's his roster. Last year... Andy Dalton and Nick Foles, when they were playing, were four and two. 
Justin Fields, when he was playing, was two and eight. So you, you think about that. Like this guy, this guy they, they both had the same rosters. These guys are winning games. This guy can't. The roster isn't great, but it's not that bad. Fields has to improve. He's got to get quicker throwing the ball. And when you watch the tape, you see a lot of times those guys open. He's just missing them. He's not anticipating throws. He's late and he's inaccurate. Both interceptions last week, the players were open. There was, there was protection. So who are you going to blame? You know, you can't blame anybody but Fields. And I will give that 40% to the organization. He has no big-time receivers. He has a good run game. Offense is a good run game, but the offensive line could be better. Defense could be a little better to get him in better situations. But it's not terrible. And obviously, there are two and one team chance to go three and one against the, the, the Giants, who aren't much better than they are, in my opinion. So I say 60% is on Fields, 40% on the Bears. Yeah, you, you mentioned the chance to go three and one there against my Giants. And, you know, I'll be the first to admit it. These might be the two ugliest two and one teams in the NFL so far this season. So what are you looking for in this matchup? Will Justin Fields complete 10 passes in a game for the first time this year? Who comes out victorious? Well, Cooper Rush had a 98 uh, quarterback rating against the Giants. So that gives me some hope. Cooper Rush, he's a backup. So Fields hopefully can complete a couple passes, but it comes down to run game. The, 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 the Giants have the 25th ranked run game, run defense in the NFL, according to Pro Football Focus. There are some holes there. They'll be able to run the football. So Khalil Herbert, run the football down the hill, downhill, and then maybe you pick some plays where Justin Fields only has to read half the field because obviously he can't read the whole field right now. And then hopefully he can complete some passes, but I'm not, you know, I'm not confident in that, to be honest. Well, one of those teams should move to three and one, not that either deserves to. Clay, before we wrap it up, because I know, you know, you're a really busy man and you've got a radio show starting momentarily that I want to plug quickly. Uh, but before we wrap it up, I want to shift over to last night's season debut of Bachelor in Paradise. Although I did mention that radio show. So before we dive into Bachelor in Paradise, why don't you tell everyone what you've got going on? I believe that starts in about six or seven minutes. Yeah, so um, I, I do radio for uh, for ESPN 1000, ESPN 9... 680. I'm sorry. 690. 690 in Jacksonville. A lot of numbers going on there. <laughs> Final answer. ESPN 690 in Jacksonville. I work uh, one day a week. I talk Jacksonville Jaguars football with, with, with them and Duval. And I'm also uh, doing some color commentary for uh, CBS Sports post game show. But tune into Jacksonville if you want to hear about the Jags. ESPN 690. Final answer, Alex. And don't forget, by the way, Clay, also, for all of you out there watching, all of you out there listening, is our fantastic co-host of the Believe in Jaguars pod right here on the Believe Network. So make sure to give them some love there and check that out. All right, man, I know we've got a couple minutes left. Bachelor in Paradise, episode one of this summer's season, debuted last night. What was your biggest reaction to, to the drama, to the new faces? For me personally, as much as I love this, this franchise, this TV show, I missed Clayton's season, and I feel like I don't know any of the women there. Yeah, there's a lot of day one women there, and there's some women that you, we don't really know as far as far as Bachelor Nation's concerned. So, you know, you gotta you gotta find those faces. But for me, I think that Katie's men, Katie Thurston's men, did a phenomenal job. He had Michael A. Guy Crush at the dad. All the women loved him. Andrew S. My cousin, my first cousin. Wait, what? Cousin. Yes, Andrew S. <laughs> my first first cousin, biological cousin. He did well. He wanted to date with uh, with Teddy. They had a great time. I, you know, I think he he's a great guy, and hopefully they uh, they end up together. And then we had um, Justin Glaze, a, a buddy of mine. You know, he's he's forming a connection with uh, Genevieve. So those are my three guys. The three guys I'm gonna be watching. I wish nothing but the best for Michael A, Justin Glaze, my cousin Andrew S in the Bachelor in Paradise. We'll see what happens with them. Yeah, they're, they're all amazing. I mean, God, Michael had me choking up on the couch talking about his story, losing his wife, of course, being a single dad. He seems like a great guy. A great guy. I, I do want to ask you, because you were on both The Bachelorette and Bachelor in Paradise. Now, before you got injured on The Bachelorette and had to leave, it seemed like it was a great experience. How do you compare the two and which was your favorite experience? I think Paradise was a little more fun. You're on the beach, you're sipping margaritas, you, you, the food's a little bit better. Uh, that's right. You're kind of stuck inside the houses all day. You don't get to do anything unless you're going. When, when you see the guys with the woman, that's the only time you get to go out of the hotel room. It's like you get to go and explore these places. You're literally stuck waiting to see her and you don't get to see her off camera. There's no any time where you get to form this connection off camera. No, it's all on camera. 
Yeah, yeah, I, I believe it. You know, I, I did a, a pilot for a reality show a year ago, and uh, the amount of time in the holding room is, uh, it's it's ridiculous. Oh, it is, it is. <laughs> well, Clay, look, man, I know you got a ESPN 690 to run to, so I really appreciate your time. Thanks so much for joining the show, and uh, hopefully we can do this again soon with the Jags winning a lot of games and Bachelor in Paradise, you know, in full steam. Absolutely, sounds good. Appreciate you having me on. Clay Harbor, we'll be back with my final word right here on this episode of Serralo Sports Talk.